Okay, so what we have in this video is a Game Boy Color. Now, I did open this uh, off camera because I got kind of um, like a backlog of parcels, so I wasn't sure what was in what, so I had to open them. Uh, but this is the typical kind of video, uh, four parts or for spares on eBay, listed as not working. I probably paid a bit more than I wanted to for this. I think I paid 28 pound in total and it's missing a battery cover, but that's probably the, the the top end of what I'd be willing to spend on a Game Boy Color. Not working as well. So yeah, the listing says that it doesn't turn on, which we'll find out here. Yeah, not even a flicker actually on the light there. Let's have a quick. Not even a flicker. Okay, cool. So I think the listing does say that the person has taken this apart and looked inside to see if there was any corrosion, but didn't see anything um, too bad. And it wasn't within their expertise to then go on and try and find the problem. So quite an interesting one. But let's get it apart. Um, and see exactly what it looks like inside for ourselves. Right, there we go. That's the power slide. So this is the insides. Um, yeah, everything looks to be really good condition let's get a close-up so down at the bottom where you'd probably expect to see some corrosion on the battery terminals there is none at all barely anything on the board this is a clean clean board okay so let's get that board out and see if there's anything on the underside that might be causing an issue. Um, I'm probably going to assume not, but it's best to not assume. Okay, then we'll disconnect the screen. And the buttons didn't stick to the board, which is I suppose a good sign of them. there'd be not much dirt and whatever left behind. There's a little bit around the start buttons, but all the contacts are clean. This is looking like a really, really good condition board, like literally near perfection. But obviously there must be something, there must be some issue stopping this from booting on. What we've got to do now is determine what part of the board is preventing the entire console from turning on. Now, I would recommend looking at these schematics. There'll be a link in the description down below um, to go and look at these yourself. Um, and it's a good idea to, to get a, somewhat of an understanding of the schematics. So in the future, you can kind of pinpoint problems uh, with greater ease. But in this video, what I'm going to do is <clears throat> walk through a kind of test to see what could be the problem between our battery terminals here and the rest and kind of the power getting to the rest of the board. Uh, luckily, it's not a case of testing too many things. It's a case of just testing everything between our positive battery terminal and our switch. So since I kind of know the power switch isn't dirty, um, I've got a you know a pretty strong suspicion it's something other than that. What I can do is just do a very quick test using a multimeter across my switch. So I'm just gonna try and get this all in one shot. Um, I'm gonna test two things. One is a straightforward continuity test. So we'll do that. So when it's in the on position, the, um, the switch should be bridging pins three and C. When it's in the on position, it bridges pins three and C. So if I touch the legs of that, we should get, yep, continuity. And then I'm just gonna put it into uh, resistance mode so we can measure the resistance across this switch. And I can see when it eventually does it, I slipped a little bit there. 
So we're reading like 0.7 ohms, which if your number's up into like the hundreds, then there's high resistance there and that's likely a very dirty uh, power switch. But 0.7 is perfectly fine. I'm just gonna put it back into continuity mode for now. So I know the switch is okay. The problem lies between the switch, uh, or just before the switch, and the battery terminal just down here. So, what I've got, and people have seen this from other videos that I've got, this is a bare PCB for a Game Boy Color. There are scans of this on that link below, so you know if, if you need to use something like this, go and look at the PCB, you can follow the traces, um, and things like that. Obviously, I don't need to use images. I've got the, the real thing here, so I'm going to use that as reference. So, if we look at our board, we can see that uh, I've got the terminal here, and that corresponds to it being here. And what I'm going to do is start testing points between the terminal and the switch. So, if it's in the on position, and I put my one of my probes onto the battery terminal and then touch the uh, pin 3, I should, on a working board, get continuity. So just for reference, let's swap out that one. Here's a working board, it's in the on position. Uh, the positive terminal, touch pin 3, there's continuity. So there's a solid connection from the positive terminal to pin 3 or leg 3 on that switch. We don't have that on this board. So in between, um, in between the switch and the battery positive terminal, there's an issue. According to the, um, according to the schematic, there are uh, two components, I think, two components that the uh, power flows through before reaching the switch. And one of those is EM6, and the other one is an F1 fuse. So I'm going to start right here at our positive battery terminal. And I'm going to check to see if the uh, if there is continuity between the positive battery terminal and uh, one of the vias. So in order to figure out where the vias are or where that leads to, we can see here is where our battery, positive battery terminal is, or would be. It then passes the power through to the other side of the board. You can see here, and then let's get that in focus. And then that then follows this copper trace all the way down to two small vertical vias just here. Now, if we kind of take careful note of the placement of these vias, you can see, uh, comparing to this populated board, it is just below the select button. So if it's just below the select button here, um, when we flip it onto the other side, we're gonna have to try and use something else as reference to figure out where it is. Now, if we look in between the start and select, you can see two more vertical vias. Um, so we can use that as a reference point. So I'm looking for the two vias that are slightly lower down than the other two. So if I flip the board back over and I look just about around here, I can see there's two vertical vias just there. And then to the left of it, slightly higher, there's two more. This one, it's slightly filled in. I think that's some solder left over from when I was removing all the components. So I apologies, I apologies, my apologies on that one. But um, the point is, it's the lower two that we want. So the, the power gets passed through, goes to the other side of the board, follows a copper trace and comes out here. So if I just do a continuity test between this via here and the uh, battery terminal just up here, we get continuity. If I do it on our, okay, not working board, so it's the lower two, so there's my vias, and I touch the positive battery terminal, we get continuity, so there's no issue there. From these two vias, it then uh, follow, flows the, the power into EM6. So I'll do a little bit of close up there, even though you can get the image up on your, your, your screen. Um, you can see just here, this copper pad feeds into this pad here, and this is where the EM6 component would sit. Straight after, there is a, another pad, and this is where our F1 fuse would sit. After that, once it's past the F1 fuse, it then goes on this copper trace 
and into, to, into the veers that are uh, slightly higher than the other two. So basically, our flow uh, of power is going to go through EM6 and it's going to go through F1 fuse. Um, so what I can do is with the known working board, I can test those two components. So if I put my probes either side of EM6, I get continuity. If I put my probes either side of the F1 fuse, I get continuity. So I know those two components are working or in working order. Onto the board that isn't working, we can do the same test. So EM6 is working and F1 fuse is also working. So those two components are fine. So once it's gone through F1 fuse, it then goes up a copper trace and into some vias to then go back to uh, the, this back side of the board. So the two vias it goes through are between start and select, these two here. And you can see that if we follow the trace, we go up and eventually works its way to three vias up here. Now, if I flip the board over, so we're looking at one side, this is the other side. <clears throat> that, that copper trace leads up to these three vias which sit underneath the power switch. Um, one of those vias is labeled SW1VCC. You can see it just there. So that's what then feeds the power to the switch. And obviously when the switch is in the off position, it's not bridging um, the pin three so leg three is what will obviously be um, receiving the power from the copper trace leading up there. So what I can start to do on the, on the non-working board is test to see if between SW1 VCC and the via down here between start and select, if there's continuity between that. And... I'm testing both the top one and the bottom one. So the top one, we get continuity. The bottom one, kind of. It beat then, beat. Yeah, so there's a bit of an issue there. But there's two vias. So as long as one of them is working and we are getting a signal from VCC to this via, then this entire copper trace that leads from here up to the switch is fine. So then what we can do is quickly test to see that if um, SW1VCC is making it successfully into the switch, I'm kind of like putting my probe into SW1VCC, having to hold it and the board at the same time, and then I'm going to probe our third pin. Perfectly fine. Let's put it in the on position. Probe our common pin. Perfectly fine. So... We've kind of done the whole path bar 1%, 2%. And that is the connection from one side of the board to the other. Now, these vias provide that connection. So from this side to this side, how it passes the, the power through is using the vias. Now, there's obviously an issue passing it from this side of the board to that side of the board to then go up to the switch. So what I'm probably going to have to do and I can, uh, let's, let's see if I can do a test here. I'm going to probe the top one on this side and then probe the bottom one on this side. And I get nothing. Even probing, oops, sorry, that was in the wrong place. So the bottom one, yeah. So in the bottom one on this side of the board, we have the other side of the board touching the top one. I get no continuity. Let's try the top one even probing the exact same via from both sides, I'm not getting any continuity at all, okay? Now, there could be a situation where your probes go through and touch each other, which then, you know, will cause continuity, but it's like a fake continuity at that point. You, it's not real. I can't even get that. So they aren't touching, which means those vias are not passing the, the, the current from this side of the board to this side of the board. So that's where my issue lies. The solution, I can do kind of one of three things. The first one could be to just clean it out, 
but I suspect that whatever was in there initially has probably done enough damage so that there is no uh, solid connection from the metal. It's not going to be caused by any dirt. Um, second option would be to repair the veer itself. That would be sticking a very, very, very small piece of wire uh, and soldering it to this side. So scrape away the PCB layer mask, scrape that away, solder a wire to this side and do the exact same on this side. The only problem with that is this is where the start and select button would go. So the membrane would sit kind of just like that, sit on top and that would not sit flush anymore. Okay, so I don't particularly want to be doing that. A third solution to this problem would be to have a wire that goes from the F1 fuse and up to the uh, pin three on the switch. Um, again, not a great solution because obviously if I start running wires, there are places where it could pinch so that the screw post here and here uh, and one up here, I've got to try and route it through so that it's not going to touch anything. But that is pretty much the problem that I have got with this board. The veers, for whatever reason, are not making continuity uh, or are not connected so I can't then uh, pass the power from the batteries into the switch. Um, so I'm going to kind of see which repair is going to be best for this situation and go from there. Okay, so that's uh, hopefully the issue sorted. So I've just kind of, I'm basically bypassing that via and the trace up to the switch by just putting in this wire, which is connected from the uh, fuse straight up to the pin or the leg three on the switch. So make sure that's in the opposition. So now, we should get this boot up and work the first time. So let's try it. Excellent, so it, it turns on. I am gonna just make sure the volume's up. So if the board's facing this way, this is our screen. Just to get full volume, you roll it all the way down. There we go. Right, so let's turn it back on again. Let's see if we get any sound. Yes, perfect. So that's that issue sorted. And as far as I'm aware, now obviously we haven't tested the screen yet on the board and I haven't put it back together. So what I'm gonna have to do is make sure uh, that this wire doesn't get pinched on this shell screw here. So if this is the back that goes on, that shell screw there could pinch the wire and I then made sure I've taped it down here so that it's away from this um, screw here. Because these, those posts sit flush with the board and you don't really want it pinching. So I'm gonna try and get this put back together with the wire not being pinched in uh, this shell, but obviously we need to now test to see whether the screen works. So I'm just gonna get this put back together
Okay, perfect. So now the only thing left to do is to test it uh, without the crocodile clips. So grab two double A's, slap them in. Obviously we haven't got a battery cover, but let's see how the screen works. Perfect. And then I'll grab a game. As usual, it's always on hand Tetris. <laughs> let's make sure that that works. It's ready first time, boots it up. So start works. Yep, all the keys work. Um, quite a straightforward one, but obviously, when it comes to power and the game not, uh, the Game Boy not responding at all to uh, putting batteries in, um, obviously a lot of people go immediately to the switch and to clean that out, which it's always a very good idea to just clean the switch out anyway, uh, just because of all the years worth of dust and dirt that can get into them. Um, but it's good to know that you know the, the flow of power through the board where it goes to what components it goes to and just doing things like this uh, help you to pick up extra bits of information like if i hadn't have been looking at the schematic and looking at the pcbs that i have i wouldn't be learning things like i've learned today like knowing that it goes through em6 and the f1 fuse uh, then into some veers up through a copper trace into the to the switch so just things like that um extremely extremely helpful so another Game Boy fixed another one uh, either for future project or for someone else to enjoy so thanks for watching guys um, if you do enjoy these type of videos please do subscribe leave a comment uh, if you've got any questions or improvements and recommendations uh, for myself but otherwise I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching